Good evening. Welcome to our daily class in Rabbi Nachman. We are still in the first Torah of the new cycle of Lukuti Moran. We are holding in the oh the third long paragraph. And we've been speaking about the the balance of power between holiness and the unholy, between the Yetzir Ra and the Yetzir Tov, between the nations and the people of Israel, and the importance of learning Torah to raise the estimation of people in the eyes of the nations for the Jewish people. It's not a pleasant thought, really, to think that the Jewish people need to rely on the opinion of the nations of us. Really, think about it. Think about it. Is it a nice feeling to think that I need the President of the United States to tell me I can be here? Or the head of the EU says I shouldn't be here? Or the head of the Russian nation says it's a question? (coughs) Is that does that make you feel good? <laughs> Not really. But here, one of the great Sadiqim of the modern era are telling us that we need that. We need them to tell us, way to go Jews. Way to come through. Way to be there. You've lifted up the grace of God by learning Torah. Your prayers have been answered. Something's going on here. We're not, it's a little duck. It's a little sharp. We need their approval? Well, actually, no. But what we need is them to see God's grace on us. So it's not really about their approval of us. It's about their witness to God's grace on us. It's a huge difference, obviously. You know, we're not codependent with the nations of the world. We don't need to get a report card from the United Nations. They've given out a few. (laughs) It'll look too good either. But to fulfill our mission, they need to see God on us. They need to see our prayers get answered. They need to see Jews learning Torah day and night, bringing down holiness into the world. And when they see that, they praise God. So it's it's really an interesting setup if you think about it. The Jewish people are between a rock and the Creator. <laughs> the nations are between the Creator and the Jewish people. I don't want to think about it too long. I might, I might get upset. Right, the Rebbe says, by the power of the kingship of holiness rising up, our prayers are answered. Of course, then the grace is raised. And then the, the nations see God on us. But the reason why our prayers are not answered. That our prayers don't have grace. That our prayers don't really get to where they need to go to find grace in the eyes of God. Our prayers don't enter the heart of heaven. Can you imagine saying this in a PC world? A Jew PC world. I can't imagine saying it. If Rabbi Nachman didn't say it, I wouldn't say it. Even if I thought it. How can you say that? The Jewish prayers don't have grace and therefore our prayers don't get answered. But we see we are living miracles. We're living miracles every day. 
So it seems like our prayers are getting answered. Well, we got to remember a little question of context. This Torah was written when the Jews were living in ghettos all across Europe. And now Jews have their own land, their own F-35s, their own nuclear weapons, their own stock market, their own produce. The only thing we need is a Jewish car, right? You know, some nice little electric car. Instead of calling it the Tesla, we'll call it the Einstein. <laughs> so the, the world climate has changed. The world political climate, the social, spiritual climate has changed. And I think God is answering our prayers. So I'm not here arguing with Rabbi Nachman. I'm just saying let's shift the lens a little farther forward from 1805. Now, uh, a fellow or two from uh, the yeshiva might say, well, Avraham, are you saying that we pray better than the ancient, the great tzaddikim of the past? I doubt I would have the chutzpah to say that either. But they could argue it and say, well, they prayed much better than we ever prayed. So how could you say our prayers are entering the heart of heaven when their prayers clearly did not get answered according to what Rabbi Nachman is teaching here? That their words lack grace and they did not enter the heart of heaven. It's pretty outrageous. So to that Kushia, I would answer, no, the greats of the past prayed more than us, with more heart than us, with more kavana than us, with more intention, with more experience, with more Torah behind them. These people didn't worry about going to a Yankees game on Shabbos, you know. They were, all they had was Torah and each other. And I think the difference is that God has come down from heaven to save us. That God has come down from heaven to hear us, you know. I got to get these guys' prayers in here. These guys, at the, at the end of generations, they're slipping. And they need help. Because I got a gaula, I got a redemption to run. And he goes on to tell us, Aval ayedei Torah, through the learning of Torah, al yedei zeh nitchabrin v'nitkashrin hagnun v'achet. As we learned early in the Torah, the connection of the letter chet, the life force, and the nun, the malchut, is when you make that connection between those two letters, you create chen. Chen is when the power is in the kingship. When you're living in a ghetto and the Cossacks come by with their, with their swords and their torches, that's not called chen. But when you join the nun and the chet through Torah, na'aseh chen. Va'alke nikra'im Torah yalat chen. Then the Torah is the, the elevation of chen. Of grace. And then a person's words also have chen. And we know Esther had chen with Achashvero. She was able to, to penetrate his uh, heart. And then, of course, a person's words and his requests are received. And so too, when a person speaks chen, when it's spoken with chen, it enters the heart of the person you're asking. And the person that receives the divrei chen, the words of grace, 
He's compared to the letter Tuf. Why? Hainu ayedeshin it chabru nit kashru achet vanun by joining the chet and the nun when nase bechinat chen ayedeze nase bechinat taf. Then, of course, the aspect the letter taf is created. Shahu lashon hakika v'rishima. The letter taf represents the idea of engraving and carving and making an impression. As it is written, Yechezkel, Hatvita Taf, that the, the letter Taf was engraved in the forehead, we know spiritually, of Cain, the first murderer, so that the rest of the creatures knew to stay away from this guy. And through this Cain, of course, we engrave a place in the heart, in the one that we need to have help from and to receive our Bakashod and answer them. Of course, the heart of heaven. Because again, he repeats the idea, a person's grace, his words are re- received because of the grace. You know, and it's, it's, it's a way of speaking, it's a timing of speaking, it's a method of speaking. There's a tremendous amount that goes into this type of speech. But when it happens, you're happy to give. Anybody who's ever gone out collecting tzedakah for a yeshiva knows about this. You can go into one place and they don't even want to look at you. And the next place they bring you in like you're somebody special. So obviously, the one who's receiving the prayers above is doing something with them. We find, therefore, right? We, re- we learned this, that the letter Chet is the engraving of the Chet into the heart of the receiver. This is what it said in Tehillim, in Kaheret, Slicha. King Shlomo said, Divrei hachamim banachat nishma'im. That the words are of the wise are received when they're given with nachat, pleasantness, ease, affability. So nachat, you see, nachat is the letters chain plus tough. <laughs> the whole thing sw- swings back on itself. Nun and chet. Chet and nun, add the tough. That's the impression of the life force in the heart of the king. And those are the same letters as nachat. Hainu bechinat chen, as he says, va'aydeze nase oti ot nachat. And nachat is nachat ruach, of course. Nachat ruach is the coming down, is the spirit of God has as nachas, you know. Every Jewish mama wants nachas from her kids, her grandkids. But nachat here, we could translate it as it's related to the language of a plane coming down on a runway and landing, lindchot. So nachat means, when you create nachat ruach, it gives God's ruach a place to come down and rest. So I think you can hear how important that is. And who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want God's grace upon you? That you have nachat, that you have grace, that people receive what you have to say. And then his words are listened to. And then his requests are heard. And of course, here we are. Everybody's praying. And everybody's getting all the reports all over the world about what's happening because we have international media, and you hear about all the Jewish people under duress. You know, now that the virus has been around, people forgot about the last two years of continuous anti-Semitism. Of course, they haven't forgotten. But I think, you know, if I was living in Chutzlarts, I would really be worried. 
and I live here, and I got three Hamas villages around, and, you know, Jerusalem has it everywhere. What do we do? We need that chen. And to lift up the chen, we need to learn the Torah properly. The Torah lishma. The Torah for God's sake. For the name of God. That means God's reputation. That when we learn Torah, Rabbi Nachman says, what is learning lishma? It's when someone else sees you do a mitzvah and they say, Baruch Hashem. That they praise God because of the way you keep the Torah. That's lishma. Because that raises up God's reputation when they see a Jew keeping the Torah properly. And unfortunately, the opposite is also true. So I really want to bless everybody that we should merit to learn and to pray with and receive God's grace and that the world should see the grace and the beauty and the wonder of the Jewish people that we've come so far, so long, so much misery to get to this day, to get to this place and time in history that we're ready to transform the world. Because that's what needs to happen. So God bless all of you. It's a new week. Sundays are always a little, little rugged around here. But we are committed and dedicated to continuing Likuti Moran until we finish the first section. And I consider it a great honor and a privilege to be able to be here and to learn with you and Check out the classes, the ones you haven't seen. You can find them in archives. Tell your friends. Send questions, answers, arguments, whatever. Join us on Patreon because it's just going to get better. Because that's the way it is with holiness and with success with the Tzadikim. That we stay with the Tzadikim and they stay with us. And with Rabbi Nachman, we have an endless storehouse of treasure. Treasures of Torah, Torah wisdom, understanding, and daily practical spiritual advice. So it's good to be here. Each week seems like a new universe. It's the 25th day of the Omer. We've got another half of the Omer to go to Chag Shavuot. And hopefully things are going to get better and better all over the world. We should all hear good news. God should protect us. This class should be for the Rafu Shlema of Yaakov Shmuel one of our friends in, on Patreon, and, and for the elevation of the soul of Rachel Fege Bat Menachem Mendel and Mutal Bat Wolf Bear. And we will look for you tomorrow. All the best.